Good night to you. You're probably watching this video now in post production as it's being recorded live on Facebook. So, what you're watching now is a replay on a topic we're going to be talking about. What are you going to do after you've launched your business? So, if you're watching the post production, just type in the number two. Too. It also just helps us to know um, how to tailor the content and if you're on YouTube right now Please leave us a con comment so that we can understand who our audience is because my mission is to help entrepreneurs such as yourself To set up reliable and lucrative businesses that are actually profitable and enjoyable now I see the live section of the um, uh, The live section has just started. I see Robert is in the house Alison Broha long time and James Thank you so much. So if you're watching the post-production, obviously, yeah, you've left us the number two there. But if you're watching live right now, we're just starting the show. So hang in there. Um, thank you all so much, um, you know, for tuning in. I see Craig is tuning in. Thank you, my man. Thank you so much. Great stuff. Now, while people are getting prepared, getting their uh, pens and notes ready, and also getting their beverage or whatever it is they're going to be drinking throughout the next 30 minutes, let me just introduce the show for those that are not well-versed with what we're doing right now. Uh, my name is Prosper Taruvinga, and I lead a team of digital experts here at Live Long Digital, you know, where we help your business grow, essentially, through digital marketing strategies and um, every single day at 2 p.m. AEST, we sit around here um, and then we can discuss ways to help you create an online footprint, um, you know, that is designed for your business growth and for your profit. I viscerally believe that if you're running an online business, it has to be profitable and enjoyable. So I'll help you build systems around what you're already doing and also help you get your business to operate on autopilot, leaving you to do what you actually know best. So what we basically help people do is generate leads generate a lot of revenue and basically working around the clock to create content so that you can create for and relate to the audience that you're going to be demanding money off of i just literally want to inspire you to do things that actually inspire you all right so i mean without further ado um i must apologize to my regulars yesterday i did not show up but we're filming something really, really cool uh, for the brand and for the business that we're going to be showcasing a little bit later on, um, especially for our international audience. Um, you're going to really, really love this. So today I'm just talking about what now, what to do when you've launched your business. All right. So I'm just, you know, um, you know, making a guess here that a lot of people at the beginning of the year sort of relaunched their businesses, relaunched their websites or went into partnership with somebody else, or actually started a business, all right? And um, for us in that particular time, we actually launched yet another product um, for Live Long Digital, that is the Australian Business Online Directory, which essentially is um, designed to help um, you know Australian businesses to connect with their audience since Facebook has stopped, um, you know, um, you know um, making pages reach out um, you know, in the news feed. So, you know, when you're finding <clears throat> an online business, um, you know, especially on the uh, Australian Business Online Directory, it's it's easy now for you to instantly connect with um, a targeted audience and people that are viscerally looking for services that you can, um, you know, uh, provide. So it, it works as a powerful tool to actually attract new clients for yourself. And also, as a small business owner, you don't have to huff and puff um, you know, um, you know, in order to appear as if you're a big or large organization, we help you connect with other small businesses so that you can, um, you know, um, you know, your, your partnerships can help serve your clients. I see Nicole, uh, Loins is in the house. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, yeah, I'm glad we had to, uh, iron out that little mishap that happened, um, regarding your profile the other time. So, um, you know, all this time, especially last year, um, um, the reason why I brought up this topic is I have a lot of people coming and asking me, um, okay, we've launched our website, we've launched our Facebook page, what are we going to do next or what, what are the next steps, you know? You know, last year I attended a, a workshop and it was about uh, uh, book publishing and the instructor actually put something in my mind that I would never forget. They said... Before a book is even there, you don't set out to write a book 
and then look for customers for that uh, book. You set out to, 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 to write a book for an already existing audience. Now, what we do, hey, Ken, thank you so much. And thank you so much for sharing that episode that we did. Um, a lot of people are liking it. So very good um, content that you put out there. A lot of us go out there to search for, for customers when we already have a product. We don't quite know where they are, what their worldview is, what their pain is, or what exactly would make them want to buy from us, especially, all right? So there's two things that you got to realize. For any transaction to happen, people have to know, like, and trust you. And people have to have a need and be willing and able to pay for that product, all right? So at the end, yes, um, Craig says, sell before you create rather than create a spec. Well, that I couldn't say it any better, you know? I couldn't say it any better because once you have people to deliver a product to, it makes it a whole lot easier because then they just accept it as if it was meant for them. Because one, if you're going to be creating a new product or a new service, what you're doing and telling people is literally insulting their intelligence, all right? Because you are going to ask them to change their way of life. You're going to ask them to change their habits. You're also going to tell them that the service that they were using was far less superior, was mediocre, and they were stupid to be going or buying or listening to that person they were listening to prior. So you have to tread carefully every time you're introducing a new product. So it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything that you have a launch party, you invite your mates, you invite, you know, your, 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 your clothes, um, group of friends, your mother, your father, your sister, or whoever, and then think that everybody now knows about your product. That's far from it. You know, we are always anticipating that people are listening to us, are watching our content or are following our stuff. People are busy. Our clients are trying to live their lives too. So if you are going to go out there and create something, make sure it is something that is meaningful, something that is needed. And once it's meaningful and needed, you personally won't, um, you know, feel um, shy or nervous to present it to people that can find the most use out of it. So that's the reason why a lot of businesses fail, because they go out like what Craig has said to create a product and then search um, you know, clients to, 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 to fulfill uh, or to sell that product to. First of all, create an audience, all right? I'm hoping that you already have an audience. Find out what is the biggest pain and then go out and create something that, you know, listens to that pain. You know, motivational aspects aside, advertising and marketing your business before it launches is one of the most effective ways to create, first of all, the anticipatory buzz and build your customer base. Because you always have to, um, literally, you always have to be on launch day. It always has to be day one because that particular day is the first time your future prospect has heard about you. So you can never say, oh, we launched six months ago. No, your prospect never heard about that launch and they are never going to hear about it up until you keep, you know, plugging away. You keep marketing and you keep reaching out to the audience and keep, you know, you know, um, reassuring them that you're not just a one click wonder, you know. So at the end of the day, it's one of those things that if you have just started a new product, if you have just started a new service, make sure you are reaching out to the people that are perfect and are well suited to pay for that product. Because if you're just going to go in and try and spray and pray or, or try and attract any kind of person, first of all, you are new. Second of all, nobody cares about your product except yourself. And nobody even knows of your existence. So if you go to people that don't care about you, you will feel rejected. Instead, go to those people you've been building an audience around. Those people you've been building a, a buzz around. And if you haven't started doing that, start creating an audience or a buzz around your product so that when you do speak to people, it feels like it's launch day for them. All right. So all those people that go out and say, oh, we're launching a new product. That's a waste of time, money and effort. You know why? Because only the people that are there, the, the people that probably helped you build that or uh, the product and never going to pay uh, purchase that product from you anyway. 
You know, not a week passes me receiving an invitation on on Instagram or on on um, Facebook. Somebody saying, "Hey, we're just launching a new business. Maybe it's a, it's like a bakery, or it's like a new pub, or it's a new fashion line, or it's a, it's like a new restaurant. We want you to come over and 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 have a look." You know what I mean? Okay, and then you wait a couple of weeks. You don't even hear about it anymore. Grand opening, grand closing. That's because they spent far too much money buying cakes and canopies and, 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 and you know, smooching and, and popping crystal on a day where people are not even watching or even knowing anything about their product. I mean, it's good to celebrate, but you, you have to constantly be letting people know who you are. Because a lot of businesses are failing because their prospects do not know of their existence. We are not tapping enough into the psyche, into the conscience, into, um, you know, the, 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 we're not triggering the need for our services enough. That's because people don't know of our existence. The market is flooded with one-click wonders. People that are just starting projects and not going through with them. You know why? It's too much to handle. You know? So like I say, every single day, there's always an invite. Come and visit us here today. This is grand opening of this joint. Wait five months, that place is closed. I mean, those of you that are in Melbourne, you would have heard about um, the fat duck. You know, I went into the ballot and I think there was about 40,000 people, um, you know, that went there, um, that, were, that, that were going to be selected because all they wanted was 54 patrons that they can serve at one particular session. The fat duck, um, the one that's at the, at the, at the casino there, I'm not going to mention the, the owner. I mean, you, you can look it up, you know, a lot of people, you know, hustled and bustled to, to, to get those tickets. You know, I didn't get the tickets, but it created enough buzz so much that we're talking about it years later. You know, we're talking about it years later. Not so many uh, launches create buzz. Not so many launches have people queuing outside the door two days before the movie has started or two days before the iPhone has been launched. Why are we failing to create that? It's because we are not being in touch with our audience before we have launched. We are not creating that buzz. We are not, you know, showing people what we are working on and are not asking for feedback before we put it out on the market. And that's the reason why when it comes in, people reject it because they were not involved in the creation of it in the first place. People will only support a wall that they helped to build. You don't go out there and create products for people. You find people and then create products for them. Does that make sense? And as much as you, 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 you find out what people really need and solve that problem and then you go and present it to them. And that's, that's the easiest way of getting or cutting through the noise of the internet right now. You know? So, so some of the stuff that people are doing right now with their launch or with their continuation from the product, because it takes up to eight times for somebody to actually understand what your product is about, or maybe make an inquiry. It takes 21 days for somebody to change their habit. So if you're introducing a new product in the market, you're asking people to change their habits. Right now, it's not like they are not buying that product from somebody else. Right now, it's not like they are not, um, you know, uh, watching somebody else's movies. Right now, it's not like they are not watching somebody else's live show. So you need to make sure that you, you are going with them every step of the way. Can you imagine how many people are inviting them to, to their own launch? And then when they go in the next day, that shop is not there anymore. So, you know, for me as a digital marketing consultant, I always meet clients who only want to develop a pre-launch or maybe just a launch campaign. And then after that, you don't hear about them. They put out the buzz right at the beginning, but then not knowing that that's not, that's the least place you need to create buzz from. You need to create the buzz from day one when you start creating the product so that people anticipate it when it comes. When you already present people with something that's finished, what are they to do? Just say, oh yeah, it looks good and walk away. But if you ask people and you're reiterating with them, they're iterating too, they're giving you ideas, feedback and all that stuff on what they want, what they expect and you build it together. 
And guess what? They're already involved and they already know what to anticipate. But if you just present something to people, they're going to look at it and then the moment it fails, they're out of, they're out of, you know, they're out of sight. You know? So when people really, really just focus on the launch campaign, you are destined for failure. And, you know, this type of one-off campaigns, nobody is waiting on, on their phone right now waiting for you to, 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 to see your first ad or waiting to see your first video showcasing your product. Nobody's waiting. So, you know, even if you just do it for the first three months when you introduce your, your business, you know, to, to, to the media or whatever it is, half of the time people don't get time to see that. We are all busy trying to survive, trying to raise our kids, trying to run our own businesses. So consistency and continued plugging away and showing people how you can help them by actually helping them with your newly found product. Don't complain that people are not buying from you if you were not advertising or if you were not talking to them yesterday. You know? And um, Paul says no one really gives a toss about that stuff. Well, absolutely. You're the only person that cares about your product. You're the only person that cares about the longevity of your, um, of your, of your service. You know? So you really want to make sure that, you know, when you, all those people that you put in uh, to, to start marketing for your, for your services, especially your, your media influencers or your social media influencers, they are part of the long term journey of your business. Don't just have a grand opening, grand closing. All right. So that's why you need to start putting in sustainable marketing activities instead of you plowing in all your money and hoping that after, after your launch, people are going to start coming back. That's the beginning of your business, my friend. You know, so that's why I always advise build your marketing slowly. You know what I mean? Build it slowly because people buy from those they know, like and trust. You build trust slowly. It takes 21 years to be 21 years old. So don't anticipate that after launch date, everybody's just going to come tripping, stumbling and falling and buying your product. You know? So from time to time, you have to constantly be checking. Is my marketing in place? What is my message? Are people hearing what I'm saying? Is it stale? Is it resonating? What feedback are you getting? Because everything that you're getting is feedback. If people are not purchasing, that is feedback. Now find out why are they not buying? Is it because they, they are not willing and able or have they not heard enough about your product? Don't assume you've done enough. Never assume people know who you are. You are not a corner store. And thank you so much, James, for tuning in. Good words as always prosper. Thank you so much. You're not a corner store. You know, everybody in the village knows about the corner store. Everybody in the village knows, um, you know, you buy whatever supplies from the corner store. But now we now live in a global village. You know, so you always have to be there for your business. You have to marry your business. Don't just hook up with your brand. You know. And um, Craig says, in my business, we have 100% upsell purely because of the service and value we provide. It is getting the clients that is the... Okay, I'll, I'll get back to that one um, quickly. And Paul says, stop trying to sell, start building relationships. Well, absolutely. People buy from those they know, like, and trust. And nobody's just going to jump on your thing just because you launched today. You know? So, you know, some of my... My social media, you know, friends or my media acquaintances, they always ask me, so what happened to um, business X? What happened to business Y? You know, they never got in touch with us, um, you know, about their new products or services after their opening buzz. You know why? Because they did not have something that was following through the, the, their launch. They spend all their money in buying those canopies and popping crystal and, and renting out Ferraris or whatever it is you do these days to celebrate the beginning of a business. The sad thing about it is some business owners expect that after the initial launch of their business with the media even, do you know what I mean? It, uh, you know, it, you know they, 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 they could always continue to do and they don't continue with new products. They become stale. And Martin says, George Constanza says, hi, Prosper. How are you doing, my man? 
Hope you're having a fantastic weekend. Thank you so much for the support. I see you behind the scenes doing your thing. All right? So whatever you're doing, stay relevant, stay fresh, and constantly be providing value to the people that you're going to be um, asking money off of. You know? You know? And um, have a rock-solid belief in yourself. Constantly providing value means, yes, you do have a belief in yourself. You know? You have to constantly build those relationships. Be there to serve. Don't just have a grand opening and a grand closing. You know? Many businesses invest a lot right at the start. And then after that, we never hear about them. So here's my two cents of how you should actually do. First of all, before you launch a product or service, create a buzz around it. Let everybody know what you're working on. We are living in a scarcity mindset where, oh, I'm, I'm going to be hugging my ideas just because people might steal them. You know what I mean? People don't care about your ideas. People care about implementation. All right? So I want it to be a surprise. Half of the people, do you actually really like surprises? No. Not a lot of people like surprises. People like to be in the know of what's happening. People like to be prepared. Why do you think in the insurance is a thriving industry? Nobody likes surprises. So if you're going to be surprising people with your new launch, well, good luck. But somebody else is out there plugging and creating buzz every single day about a product that's not been launched yet. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, these days we've got social media. <laughs> Paul Harris says you're on fire. Thank you so much for the support, man. So, you know, with social media, you, you don't really need to invest that much money. You just need to invest your time. Every single day, this is free. Life is free. Go behind the scenes. Tell people today is day 15. I'm still alive. This is what I'm working on. Send money. They're holding me hostage, but they're treating me well. You know, and then after that, you know, you document the process and people like following those things because some people cannot do it themselves. And guess what? People will actually pay more when they've seen something and how difficult it's been than you just showing up and say, hey, look what I made. Have you ever noticed when you've got a kid and she comes in and, um, you know, she shows you something she's created. You just look at it and you give her. Well, that's what I do. And you give her, um, what is it, sticky tape or whatever to, 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 to put it on the, on the fridge. And when she's sleeping, you take it off. But if you've created it together, you make sure you keep that. I do that. If, if we've made it together, I make sure we keep that. You know? Yeah. And uh, Paul says, uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, you know, uh, Martin Faruga. So share some teaser videos about what you're doing. Put posts and photos about your business through social media accounts. Stay relevant because some people might also be trying to do what you're doing. So they might also get to understand how you're doing it and learn from you because we're here to live. We're here to learn. We're here to contribute. It doesn't mean you have to come out perfect, you know, you know, and I really, really recommend that you invest good um, you know, with digital, good, good digital content. Or maybe if you cannot do it yourself, get a creator who can work effectively. Everyone in our families, you know, you probably have a, a son or a niece or somebody who is like in the younger ages. They're always snapping away on their Snapchat or on their Instagram. Find out how they're doing it. Reverse mentor with them. They teach you the social part. You teach them life because they don't know anything. That's why they live with you. Or live with the people that are paying bills for them. So I really, really recommend that you invest a really, really good digital, um, you know, content creator who can work with highly effective content that encourages sharing. So that people get to understand what you're working on behind the scenes before you launch. You just don't have to post a photo, guys. It needs to be shared. You need to engage with the audience. And Craig says, I find there is a two to four week acquisition time frame for a client to come across. Um, it is then one to three weeks before they buy again. Absolutely. There's, there's, a, there's, there's running um, statistics that say people need to see your stuff at least eight different times. 
You know what I mean? And, and the day you don't show up, you're starting that clock once again. If they were already on six and they were, you know, ready in their customer's journey, if they don't see you again, you, it diminishes their, their, their trust. You know? And Paul says, plus show up every day as you would in a brick and mortar business. Don't open doors and you don't get paid. Absolutely. Because we think that what we are doing right now online, we're hiding behind the screen. No, people can see what we're doing. And you know what the worst part is? Paul, thanks for bringing that up. You know, what is happening now in this day and age, we are only just um, reliving the days when the Smith, the, 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 the shield maker, the, um, you know, um, the... The hunter, the gatherer had one particular task. So as a business um, owner yourself, you have that one particular task to serve your village. And if you don't show up, then that means your village suffers. Now, if your work is important, you are needed. So you have to make sure you are there every single day. So hiding behind a screen, people will come searching for you. And they will find things you don't want them to see. So why not put it out there so that they don't come searching? That's just, that's just normal stuff. You know, back in the, you know, in, in, in the medieval ages, people had a single task. One person was the belt maker, the other one was the cobbler, the shoemaker, the other one was the smith. And then the industrial revolution came up and then they put everything else into, into, into industries and factories. And then we came to the technological age, the factory became the office. All you gotta do really is figure out what are you in society and where am I needed? And start letting people know how you're going to be helping them. All right. Um, and Julie says, good point on the fear of sharing and having others steal an idea or design. How much do you give show over a build? Hmm. Um, I'm not quite getting your question there. Um, how much do you give... Julie, can you can you maybe type it a little bit? I'm, I'm I'm trying to understand what you mean. How much do you do you give, or how much do you show over a build? Oh, or how much can you show? At least enough to to create the curiosity. At least enough to show people that you're actually creating this thing yourself. It's not being done by somebody else. You know what I mean? At least to to just create that curiosity. A tester. Um, you know, even when you go to the shops, don't they give you samples? Give people samples of what's to come so that they can anticipate and be ready and waiting in line um, for when you launch your product or whatever it is. And Paul says, it's all about education in my industry rather than selling to them. People need to be taught what to want. You know what I mean? People need to be taught what to want. And at the end of the day, you really, really need to be showing people that you can help them by actually helping them. What's in it for them? Why should they follow you instead of following, um, you know, Sally or Jane or Tom or down the road? And Julie says, we have a product we are currently building. How much without giving all away to opposition? Guess what? If it's yours, the opposition will never get your clients. Everybody's different. You might think that your, your opposition might... They might know, yes, but by the time they implement, they're not going to implement as good as you um, have. And in any case, if, if somebody copies your stuff, people would know who the original person was. What if the, the, the opposition is also working on something, and by the time you present your product to the market, people already think you copied. So just show teasers, you know, behind the scenes photos. Show people you're working behind what's to come, what to expect. Find out if people would utilize that product. You could spend eight years trying to create something that nobody wants. All right. There's a lot of people that I know that were creating um, products for Facebook pages. Now, Facebook pages is no longer valuable to, to, to the audience. So they spend all this time hiding behind the scenes and not showing people what they were creating. They could have been warned before that. Hey, listen, do it this way. This is what we want. It works this way. Find out who your audience is. Find out who is the person that you're creating that product for and start asking them if they will use it. These days, it will be too much money spent on trying to create something that the audience is probably purchasing somewhere else already. So, yeah, it's my advice to don't be afraid of the opposition. The opposition is, is also just doing something 
you know, to, to get better themselves. It's, it's no longer a scarcity mindset. We all have access to all this information. If Google was afraid of the opposition, would we be having all this information? So that's just how I feel like, you know. Um, Craig says, Sophia's Pizza in Camberwell franchised. Seven other restaurants, seven have now closed and the other three are totally different. Okay, I don't quite see the rest of the thing, but I'll, I'll follow through with you, Craig. Thank you so much for supporting that. So all I'm just saying, guys, is try and liaise with the people that you think are going to be your audience. You can even have, you know, a, a closed group discussion, um, you know, with people that are going to be purchasing from you so that they are part of what's going on. They will then become the early adopters of your product and then spread it around with word of mouth. Because if you leave all the marketing to yourself, it's going to be difficult and it will take much more time uh, for you to gain traction. All right. So half of the time, if you don't think you can afford maybe marketing services or you can afford being online constantly or you don't think you can afford to let go of your idea, then. Yeah, you know, if you don't think you can let go of your idea, try and invest in some sort of pre-launch um, you know, um, try and invest something. What do you call it? Try and invest in, 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 in some sort of pre-launch uh, ideas or some sort of pre-launch program. Because if people are not going to know what you're creating, they're not going to just show up on your door just because it's you. You know, Alison says, speaking of Google, I heard Google ad space is really cheap right now. Well, it is because they know that Facebook is really eyeing on getting all the, um, you know, ad space. Um, I mean, um, uh, the, the, the advertising money. So that's the reason why they no longer allow, um, you know, um, uh, people to, to, I mean, pages to be seen in the newsfeed. All right. So when you introduce your product, um, yes, Paul says, be you. I mean, everybody else is taken. You really, really want to be make, making sure that whatever you do, you are authentic to yourself because people buy a story. People buy people all right they're not just going to purchase something just because um you know they they, they they run out or anything else people buy the story behind it so you want to be creating that story and getting people involved way before you've even launched that's all i'm saying and that's the reason why we did the same we started talking about the australian business online directory months before we launched and right now we're sitting on 4500 um you know uh subscribers all in a space of three weeks. Now we're going on to four weeks, all right? Um, and Martin says, always be looking for value and add, value add and put yourself in your customer's shoes. Absolutely, because you need to see the world in their own eyes. You can actually go in and, 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 and create something, but at the end of the day, if people don't like it, if people don't adopt it, grand opening, grand closing. Um, and Paul says, not everyone can be like this legend. <laughs> well, I mean, at least you can, you can, you can, you can be you, all right? Be yourself and people actually appreciate that because if you try and emulate or copy somebody else, they've already seen it. Then there's no longer authenticity in whatever it is that you're doing, all right? But if you're going to be launching a new product, make sure people actually anticipate what's coming. They already know what it is. Um... <laughs> Craig says, you tricked me into joining <laughs> Abbott. Thanks, it is great. Well, <laughs> it wasn't a trick. We did a video before and I wanted to put you on the platform. And thank you so much <laughs> for the content. Absolutely. All right. So just don't think for a second, you know, I mean, just think about it for a second. Coca-Cola, one of the world's biggest brands, and uh, Kellogg's or any other brand that you might think of, Nike, whatever it is. They're always telling a story, you know, and they invest a lot of money in their advertising and, um, you know, whatever PR coverage they might have. Even if they, everyone knows what Coca-Cola is, even if anybody knows um, what you, um, what, what um, you know, you know, what, what, what Nike is. All right. So you really, really want to make sure that you're constantly, um, you know, in, in, in front of your target audience because out of sight, out of mind. I mean, you don't have to have a huge conglomerate or you don't have to have a huge ad budget. Facebook Live, Facebook, um, you know, um, or maybe have a chatbot or whatever strategy you might use. All right. So 
If you don't believe in the importance of you reaching out to your audience before you launch your product and at launch phase, perhaps you should really, really consider what other people are doing and how it's going to impact, you know, the longevity of your business. I really want you to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And I know that a lot of people are starting a new business right about now. Okay. So at the end of the day, if you haven't launched yet, let people know what you're creating. Bring them on with the journey. Share that story. You know, the scarcity mindset of, oh, I think our competition is going to steal our ideas. Implementation is what people care about. What's in it for them? How are you helping them by actually helping them? And for those that haven't joined the Australian Business Online Directory, type in the words DIR and I'll send you through a link so that you can also join, you know, the hordes of Australian businesses that are actually, um, you know, um, creating and relating for their audiences using a platform that is made it easy for them to actually reach um, one another within Australia. If you've got any questions, let's continue this conversation right at the bottom. But thank you so much, everybody else that's been tuning in. Thank you so much, everybody else that's supporting us. And thank you so much, everybody else that really, really is believing in our story and watching us grow um, at the end of the day. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day, guys.